analyzing the games, we will, we will see all the games that were played. In one, two, three, and four. And okay, some of them, to be honest, none of them was really exciting. I mean, let's, uh, let's put it the way, the way it is. The fact that uh, games three and four were considered exciting, it's just or something, just because one and two were ridiculous. So, uh, not really serious. But, okay, it's World Championship match, and of course everyone is so nervous, especially, I mean, there's, there are like really, really huge stakes here for both, for both players. The way that I want to, or I was thinking to do our evening, p pretty much every evening, is basically like a live show, like on ICC. So I, I don't want to rely so heavily on s computer analysis. So the reason I said I think that there are huge stakes for this match, I think bigger than Topalov Anand and pretty much bigger than any other match that we've seen in a long, really, 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 actually long time is, well, first of all, I think it's the first match in since 1921, that's 92 years, that the two players are non-Russian or Soviet, ex-Soviet Union. Okay, there was uh, actually, actually Anand Topalov was the previous one, just Anand Topalov. But both of them were kind of already world champions, so uh, without, if you count that out. And obviously for Anand, well, it's much more interesting match than Gelfand. Against Gelfand, he, he had just downside. I mean, wh what was his upside against Gelfand? Okay, he could have won the match 8-4 and everyone said, wow, he crushed Gelfand, but it was as far as humanly possible to imagine that, and he was almost close to one of the biggest, maybe the, the biggest embarrassment for a world champion, losing to player at that time number 25 in the world. So, but here, well, here he has absolutely huge upside. I mean, if he will win this match, I mean, maybe on paper, yeah, you'll still say Kasparov had a greater history, like, you know, if you will look at the performance and everything, but if you really look at World Championship matches, I mean, no joke, he beat Kramnik, Kasparov couldn't do it, he beat Topalov, beat Gelfand, beat Carlsen, assuming he will do it, he won the World Championship in 2000, he beat Shirov and so on. That's really, may I mean, maybe just looking at those statistics, maybe he will be the greatest. If you just look at World Championships titles and defending and so on. So that's what he has on his take. Okay, the other side is very clear, becoming one of the youngest World Champions ever. I mean, being the top player in the world for three years and actually just getting the title. So I think this might explain at least the very low start. So let's see the beautiful games one and two that everyone's so excited. And then we will see a little bit after. So we will be seeing it without any uh, analysis on ICC, and I will use a tiny bit here for preferably smart insight or just some insight not smart. Okay, uh, I was here actually, well, doing the Wednesday and Thursday's classes, and I think that I said more than once, actually many times, that, well, I think we will see some knight f3, g3, b3, from Carlsen, just an, exactly with that hand move, which basically means, okay, I'm just the best player in the world, I don't need any openings, I'll just move the pieces and somehow I will outplay you, which basically works for him pretty much, so it wasn't any surprise to see this on the first game. Okay, uh, it will, b by the way, it will be interesting to see at some point if we will start seeing like absolutely main lines. Because so far, third of the match is gone. Third, it's huge. Nothing was really shown there. Nothing. I mean, the players could have been working half a year preparing 10 hours a day, or could be at the swimming pool watching a movies, and the openings and everything looks kind of the same. Okay, so they got a very, very standard position. C4 could have been played earlier. I think that in this position, c4, if castle weakened on supposed to, basically this is the Grunfeld of the Fianchetto, Kings Indian, and okay, there have been many games like this, uh, actually Karpov had several big games, like against Kasparov, against Kamsky. I think that in this specific move order, capture here might be quite a serious alternative first, because 
when the pawn is on c6, the diagonal is already blocked, it gives black a lot of flexibility for some things. For example, if knight e5, knight g4 is supposed to be already quite strong because there's pressure on d4, and if take, take, white bishop cannot get to b7. So, okay, knight a3 is a possibility. We can still consider that. But Carlsen, very true believer to doing nothing and moving the pieces, play this way. Actually, we have seen a game here. If I'm not mistaken, it was the Rapid from Norway 2010 that Carlsen beat Anand in a very similar structure. I mean, for people that were here, basically they exchanged those pieces, and he played e6, and Carlsen won in a long game. And therefore, this is a very, very logical, very logical reply, 94. I mean, pretty much automatic reply, I would even say. The main idea is just to be able to put the bishops to be opposing one another. And once you neutralize this bishop, it's supposed to be quite all right for black. I mean, there were some games like this. OK, we can mention Huzman against Nan in Amsterdam. and. Okay, Asayev against Golod, all of those are, okay, obviously Huzman is Gelfand second and Nan one of the strongest players in the 80s and the other two, Asayev and Golod, are just very decent. Uh, actually, I think Asayev died in a, in a car accident, if I'm not mistaken, but quite young, one of the members of the Armenian team that won the Olympiad and Golod is actually an Israeli player that I know quite well, a local grandmaster. All right. So knight e4 was played by enough grandmaster and is absolutely the logical reply. But Anand took and played knight b6. On the surface, it looks like, well, quite a bizarre or wrong way of playing and just giving the center. But the problem usually with those hanging pawns is just how to defend them. So let, let's, since I spoke for almost 10 minutes nonstop and surprisingly nobody said a word, so let's hear some of your thoughts. So how to defend the pawn on c4? What are our possibilities? <coughs> but then the, the problem moving the knight in many versions, d4 is hanging. I think I think this is a problem and well the bishop is not defended if the bishop is defended well you might have some fun thinking about some knight d5 but the bishop is just not defended at all so queen b3 yeah this is actually a very serious move black will play the most straightforward which is bishop e6 once again attacking the pawn if white will manage to consolidate let's say white get a few more moves rook d1 rook c1 Okay, white is better, he does have the center, but bishop e6. And not, yeah? <coughs> Before, yeah, that, this was what was played in the game, c5, right. And here, okay, I mean, always something like this has to be considered, but I mean, most likely, even bishop take looks somewhat reason. I mean, bishop take, the problem is something like this, just looking at it quickly. Actually, this is, this is maybe big problems for black. I mean, he's a pawn up, but there are some really serious threats here. I mean, actually, e4 is more than a serious threat. This, this is probably really, really not pretty. f5, knight, knight g5, knight d4. But Black can play this way. Of course, he would like to get the bishop here. And if knight g5, the big idea for white, I mean, for example, let, let's just go into a big series of captures. Capture, capture, yeah. here. But white, white will be very happy yeah. in this position. E even, even if he will be somehow a pawn down, I think that black is, in, black is worse here. I actually, Maybe I could first take here. Yeah, because if take, 
the contact end. So it's not even another pawn. I mean, this is absolutely risk-free for white. He's a pawn down, but the b7 pawn is weak, the king is weak, the rook on f7 looks ridiculous, and I mean, white, white is just better here. That's impossible to play this knight against this bishop. But I think that black has this important resource. Knight to f4, and after take, take, impossible to take on c5 because on b7 because of knight c5. So just tactically, queen b3 is not really working that great for white. So that's why c5 was played. And actually, this was not played by too many strong players, but it was played in some correspondence game. And you know, those correspondence games are really, really serious. When I was really young, I remember hearing that you know, and th that was actually before Houdini, before all those things. Now maybe they're even more serious. Like some people just sitting one week playing a move, you know, if it's a 2400 sitting one week playing a move, he, he can probably play like 2700. So correspondence games, are some of them are amazing, but better than Carlsen and Nand, and some, some of them quality is just incredible. So this was one game, we'll see that in a second. Okay, retreating the bishop is one possibility, queen b3 is mentioned as, as another one. And then, once again, bishop goes to e6. And if queen back, this was some idea for repetition, obviously very creative. <laughs> but b6 is also possible. I mean, black, black is... black. Pretty much black is for choice whether he's better or not. Like, well, what, what does he want to play in, in this position? All right. So bishop c1. This, this was all played already. And here, knight d5, people really, really liked, liked this move. But another move that was already played is knight d4. Again, the same idea. I mean, uh, I find this move as reasonable as knight d5. If queen b3, first of all, b5 is always a possibility, but even something like this. I mean, in the game, black very quickly got the initiative here. Like, just take, take. This is really, like, once again, really important to understand. Whenever there's a bishop on g2, if we can put a bishop on same diagonal, you just pretty much neutralize this bishop, take everything that he wants to do. So just to be certain, black is better here. Actually, white won the game, but no, not, not very, very strong players. Not probably master's level. But okay, an unplayed knight d5. And here Carlsen played queen b3, which basically already, you know, is satisfied with a draw, knight a5 back and forth. But <coughs> what really, what really can he play in this position? I mean, the knight, the knight is under attack. Okay, there, there was some, there was some ideas uh, um, suggesting take on, or oh, queen e1 was another possibility. But if queen e1, think knight before. I mean, this is this just some dangerous stuff. This, this is one idea. Also, bishop g4 is another idea. And then at some point, we're going to see e5 coming, a big normal break on this diagonal. Anyway. Queen b3 was played, and it was here. It was Anand's choice to decide if he wants a draw or not. There were some ideas that he can maybe play b5. I mean, I remember actually I came here on the night. Ben was already kind of with all the analysis and all seen the analysis, and he thought that well, b5 was possibility. Yeah, they show some lines that involve cap that involve capture 
let's just see those and then knight to a5 I mean probably you don't want to get this position something like this actually might play for white I mean now you open the diagonal there's some weakness I mean white can play here but knight a5 and then the pawn captures on b6 looks perfectly okay this is the analysis they give with also equal okay I, I don't think possible to blame Anand at all for making this draw so basically nothing happened I mean like I said I think six months of preparation or being in the beach and you know hanging around this game was like that mm. all right the weather Carlsen was uh, you know lacking energy and you know his player was less than his normal level I don't think so I mean I think for, okay objectively I think D takes C4 was something that he wasn't really expecting um, again for me it wasn't uh, it wasn't a surprise the opening on the the contrary I mean you know Ben is here and he will put uh, our videos from last week on YouTube and I mean the amount of times that I said knight f3 g3 basically just okay you know I'm just moving the pieces I mean uh, it's known that Carlsen is I don't know like insanely talented I mean insanely in any level I mean in any level but maybe because of that he allows himself to be lazy I mean people know that he's yeah, kind of I don't know Let, let's put it this way right now no no harm was done I mean, if he will win this title then we will say wow it's maybe the greatest talent ever in chess history he can be watching movies non-stop and still become world champion if he will lose or basically won't win then you'll say you see doesn't matter how talented you are you have to work no the first game same Carlson like uh, if you remember when Carlson came with a novelty on move 25 in any big line in the last two three years you should tell me I don't is <laughs> like I don't it's moving the pieces and it's working against everyone so it's 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 also by the way was pretty much working against Anand today he's just he's not playing actually really best chess but today was probably winning but we will get to that okay so actually that's interesting that Anand played that Anand played e4 I mean somehow I thought that he might want to go more with d4 I mean he, he used to play e4 was his main play and then he had to basically change it because of because of Kramnik he just said in the match in 2008 wasn't really clear what to play against the Petrov actually at that time was really really difficult to get anything against the the Petrov and there are some ideas that came up since then but okay to, today you have maybe a better uh, more modern patch of which is the Berlin that we've seen today <coughs> but I was thinking that d4 might might be played more but okay you already played two times e4 okay, so yeah okay c6 yeah somewhat a surprise by Carlsen I remember I spoke today with someone I thought okay maybe he will go back to to e5 but okay I mean pretty much every opening is playable and possible at that level I mean maybe he will play maybe Sicilian is actually the one that you don't want to play against Anand or maybe the one that will favor Anand the most in the sense of chances and all those but the Kavu Khan is very solid Carlsen had few games I mean actually not many but and maybe they were even rapid so I remember one against Rajabov no that was you know, maybe in one of the vacant days but definitely not major one to expect let me actually load game number two here <coughs> all right <coughs> okay this this is the line that I mean Karpov used to play well, Kapu used to play bishop f5 and also many games with 
knight d7 and knight gf6 but bishop f5 I believe today became became the more popular move okay h4 h6 knight f3 yeah this is this move not as uh, um, I would say not the main move in the position it's supposed to be you're not supposed to at least principle in theory is supposed to allow knight e5 or it's supposed to somewhat favor somewhat favor white uh, for example knight f6 is another move that actually is being played like for example recent game uh, in this line is um, Adams beat Henkin in Dortmund three and a half, three and a half, four months ago I think the game went something like that actually it was quite I mean this is actually main line they play here, here, check. Something like quite interesting like that. But okay, it was maybe a bit better for White. Adams had one of his best tournament in life, winning it seven out of nine before Kramnik. Okay, so e6. Okay, knight e5 is the, by the way, step back. Knight d7 is of course the main move. I mean, just not allowing this knight e5 and okay, then we see we will see this position and either it's going to come with knight f6 queen c7 and long castle or knight f6 bishop e7 and short castle which is the actually anan plays this line a lot with black i mean there are many games of or quite a few games of anand with the black pieces but this is interesting and in anand had a game exactly this way this year against Dingley ran. I believe it was in Alekhine Memorial. We will see when they deviated. I believe it was on very, very on the 14th move. Okay. <coughs> F4. This is the idea that White wants to achieve. By playing quickly knight e5, he can get f4. And why he could play knight e5? Because black was a bit slow with knight e7. Check. Okay, check. And moving back, should be two. Actually, I assume that if take the pawn, white is just gonna. Well, actually, he can either take immediately. I mean, you cannot take here because g7 is hanging, and the queen cannot take. So king take. I believe this is way more than enough for a pawn. Yeah. Yeah, I think the reason is that in some lines he wants the bishop not to be on d2, so the queen can go to a5. That, that is a very typical idea in many of those positions. The queen can go to a5 in many versions. Yeah, so here instead of long castle, Actually, actually, this is a line. This is a line. Okay, there were several. For example, instead of c3, just to tiny bit touch this point a bit more, there was bishop d2. This was actually a game played in the World Cup of two very strong players, Yakovenko and Elyanov. They played this version. <coughs> Okay, and they actually made quite a quick draw here. Queen to e2, queen c7, knight e4. Okay, really just they took and took on e5 and was quite a quick draw. But okay, c3, c3 w shouldn't have been like a huge surprise for pretty much any of the players. Bishop d2. Yeah, so let's see Anand's game form this year. Queen e2 was played by Anand. Oh, yeah, it was in the Alakine Memorial. Before, 
queen c7, sorry, c5 taken now before. And actually, he just castled white and castled short and white just a pawn up. I mean, that's usually black supposed to get like a a5 and b6 and get some, you know, attacking the pawn chain and so on. But in the game, uh, Dingleman didn't get to do anything. Actually, Anand was one of his best games, one of his best games this year that he won. All right, apparently they had some ideas, different ideas, and if you ask me what are the different ideas, if I knew I would be playing there, or at least assisting one of them, so not going there, but Long Castle. And actually very interesting that this move was played after the previous games that we have mentioned, after all of them. We mentioned, when, when study openings, it's actually always very, very interesting to to see chronologically what was played and when and who to trust. Like for example, this is another game of a player we already mentioned before. This is in Arkiev against Elyanov, a tournament in Russia was played two weeks after the World Cup. So Elyanov played this against Yakovenko, he played this two weeks after. Well, probably he's quite okay with this line. And that was two months ago, I think, or two and a half months ago. He's quite okay with this line. In that game, Elianov played with black c5, bishop e3, castle. Okay, they got this position, king knight e4. And once again, actually very, very similar structure to what we will, we might get in the game. D takes e5. May maybe take like with this pawn and those ideas, a possibility. Actually, d takes c5. Rook d8. All right. Actually, black should not win this position, but somehow he went and won it. Don't ask me how or why. After h5, white is more than, well, white is okay, maybe slightly better, maybe equal. Alrighty. Well, Carlson play just simple move castle. Okay, knight e4. I mean, moving of the knight has really one purpose. What is that purpose? Yep. Yeah, just exactly. Just just to. I mean, in some in some lines in the Karo Khan, like we we see ideas of knight f1. Some other ver just move the knight even so it won't be exchanged and then and then uh, g4. Okay. Okay, Kn knight takes e5 is one idea, but Carlson took, took, and took. I mean, then this is actually really interesting to to take on e5. It wouldn't be my first instinct. Uh, what 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 is Logically, first instinct here for black, for people that play Karukan or for people that now are looking at a Karukan. E5 captures the black knight. This was played in the game. This was played in the game, but it, it, at least mine, it's not my first instinct to capture the knight. Just knight f6 and queen d5? Exactly. And then, and then many, many times with, when queen is on e2, we see queen e4. And, and queen exchanges. It's so typical to so many, many, many lines. So which move should be considered here? This is interesting. It's actually interesting that the most logical move is actually, at least according to the computer, the, the best move. Yeah, queen e2 is most logical. Just put the queen there. And then, yeah, indeed, computer is suggesting, okay, if queen d5 is very interesting, I mean, this, this, this is really, really dangerous. I mean, <coughs> queen d5 is the logical move. Well, when saying, okay, you play king b1, 
Um, and okay, like black is ah, maybe tiny worse, but no real weaknesses and no big problemas and so on. But this is really dangerous. I mean, this immediately. This this is not a bad one. I mean, taking the pawn looks really dangerous. I mean, well, maybe not dangerous anymore. Maybe it's just over. Like this is really dangerous. Black has no attack. He just took a pawn, but he has nothing over there. And white just have everything open on the on the king side. Yeah, g4 is really, I think this idea, I mean, probably black should still be looking to exchange queens here with queen e4, but he's already a bit behind here. I mean, white didn't even waste any move, and oh, white is for certain better here. Even with exchanges of the queen, maybe he can even move somewhere. This is computer suggestion, but it just doesn't, does, I mean, okay, without queen, Black is very happy, right? He has to fix the pawns everywhere, and but the problem is there are queens on the board, and I'm not. I don't know. I I really like the the square there, but maybe like g4, and then okay, play same lines. It just looks somewhat dangerous uh, for Black. Probably he will play queen d5 and exchange the queens this way or another, but. I can understand why Carlsen wasn't so much in the mood for that. So he took. And basically went to very similar ideas. So here it's interesting. I mean, I, I said that we will look at this game like, okay, like we're doing some live commentary, but still, we, we already seen the other two games. I think that in the first game there can be no complaints at all for Anand. I mean, even... Okay, maybe Kasparov is one of those players that if he thought he's tiny better in the first game with black, he might have played, doesn't care. White, black, first game, he might just play. But Anand, I don't think, well, never had those killer instincts. But this game, tiny bit, but especially the third game, I think the third game was horrible for, for Anand, like really, really horrible. Actually, I can tell you we will see the third game. I told everyone and I'm saying it here live, or oh, somewhat live. No, I think the match is over after the third game, and not in Anand's favor. I mean, if he couldn't push in the position that he had in the third game, no. So, I mean, and today, today he had a miracle. He, he, he didn't lose, but he just, he's not going to, I mean, I, I actually kind of more and more thinking he's not going to win a game in the match. If he somehow can avoid losing, well, very nice for him, but I, I don't think he's going to win a game, so the question is when, when he's going to lose one and then I think it's all over. But this is also an interesting position because, okay, after take I don't think he's really playing for a win. Eh, okay, I mean, queen, queen g4 was, was a very critical, very, very critical move. And actually here, really interesting what to play. I mean, there are two moves that were that were very, very seriously considered, and actually one of them, two players like Correspondence Game already played that position, so that's no joke. And those are real killers. So really, the two moves that we can consider are either King H7. Just moving the, just moving the king. I don't know. White is white. Kind of want to take here. I mean, this is meaningless. This is meaningless. So king h7, f5 is actually probably the best move. It's interesting that Carlsen said he would have played king h7, and not f5, which is more accurate. So first of all, let's see. After king h7, king b1. Okay. Well, protecting the pawn is not bad. But now there are some, there are some ideas for, for white, mainly involving this move at some moment. 
For example, if rook a d8, I really, really like this move. I think it's a very strong move. One, it paves the way for the pawns to advance. It controls more squares around the king. And for example, if I think the innocent c5, I think just runs into big trouble after bishop g5. Yeah, let's look at queen e2. Yeah, if c5, after bishop g5, already big advantage. Because the rook is aiming at the queen, and everything is well, quite defended. I mean, if pawn take, I mean, okay, let's not actually. I think this might be more precise immediately, right? This is just checkmate pretty much. So the, the threat is to take, but also to take here. OK, black, 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 of course, should not play c5. He can move back. But OK, but then white seems to be, white seems to be playing in this position. c4, once again, take. I think take, take maybe move like bishop b4 is problematic at least this move i'm saying at least because this is interesting like for example such position okay white is better but actually when looking at it like just very quickly i, I think this is much much this is just winning right i wouldn't i wouldn't waste any energy on looking at bishop b4 this just winning the game. The queen has no squares to stay here. And then when it moves back, I don't know, something like that. Somehow it looks very dangerous for black and quite for free. But I think that this move that Carlson said he thought was wrong is actually actually a better move. The thing is that if they can take, the pawn on e6 looks weak. Well, maybe it is weak. But black gets a lot of very quick play with rook f2. a2 is right now hanging. So just black just gets in a very, very quick play. Actually, I think that this position, uh, after take, computer is even tiny bit favoring, tiny bit favoring black, or let's say equal. but. That's not the way to go. So the correspondence, I think it was a correspondence game, pretty certain, went queen g6, now take. OK, because now he has rook f7. It looks really dangerous, but the computer is not really, is not getting very excited, at least. I mean, g4 was played. In the game they took, and the computer was preferring f4 and saying it's around equal. OK, the game went take, take, a5, rook to g1, bishop f8, and it was a draw. Actually, OK. So this is this is first moment. Now, I mean, does Anand have to play for a win? he doesn't have to play for a win but should he make effort to do I mean how is he going to win the g a, a game I mean it's not going to be like same story like with Topalov I mean basically he won the last two championships he won basically because of Rapid well he beat Topalov because Topalov was so terrified to play Rapid games against Anand that he went kind of crazy in the last game I mean, that, that was really the reason why Topalov, or main reason at least, he said, but why he, he played with White so carelessly, like really incredible. He just did, was afraid of Rapids. Against Gelfand, he actually won in Rapids. The match was 6-6, and he won the match in Rapid. I think against Carlsen, I mean, Rapid are not necessarily any, any, you know, any, any spot to escape for Anand. I mean, 
I always remember uh, in one of the melody numbers, this was just unbelievable. Carlsen finished with nine and a half out of 11 in the rapid section. He made one draw with Grishuk and he lost to Ivan Shuk, of course. But he beat everyone. I mean, like everyone, like Anand, Kramnik, every player, Aronian in the rapid. That's like plus eight out of 11 games. And seriously, there were like players number one to eight, one to nine in the world and several one or two tiny weaker. So rapid is not going to be any escape spot for Anand. So, I mean, if you don't want to push in this position, even though let's say it's somewhat equal, but maybe some pushing. All right, well, we'll save those, uh, all those complaints for the next game. B5, okay, basically not much is happening here. I mean, no attack. Black just pushed the pawn to prevent white from getting anything on that side. At some point he's threatening to play some minority attack, but he, he doesn't really, I think, want to to do that. Okay, so here a5, rook f1, rook c8, and here uh, I remember uh, last year in the Pan Am, I was, I was doing some commentary there and uh, mainly hanging around and tiny bit doing commentary. But uh, it was actually really cool. Uh, Yasser was there from uh, Lindenwood and he hang a, a lot in the press room and Unishuk was there. And we looked at one game and Unishuk found a way for a repetition. And I was joking, I said, you know, I said like, seriously, that's how you're thinking? He said like, you know, you have to be professional after all the tournaments that you're kind of forbidden to make a draw. You kind of start thinking professionally about Repetitions, although of course he's the, uh, you know, very very big fighter and exactly the opposite. That's why it was funny, but apparently those players are finding very creative way for repetition. Rook g3, threatening the pawn, and mission accomplished. You know, attacking here, here, here. Okay, so that was just a draw once again. Oh no, no big event. I mean, could could have been more interesting. I mean, may, actually, this, this seemed to be the most interesting point of the game, which Anand chose to ignore. So both games, I think, together took two hours and together, tiny bit, right? The first one was one hour and 10 minutes, and the second one, maybe about an hour, something like that. Black, well, well okay, the, in the first game, let's be objective. Black was not really better. You cannot say, hey, Black was better at this point. But Black had the choice in the first game. This game is non-event, and in games three and four, Black was, cl okay, in, Bla in game three, Black was better, maybe more than better. In game four, Black was probably winning. So, yeah, I mean, Black, 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 Black probably wasn't worse. Uh, maybe this position on the board is the only position that Black should be thinking in the entire match of maybe getting worse. But okay, if, um, if Carlsen want to get something with White, well, either this knight f3, c4, g3, whatever, gonna work. So far, at least, Anand is, is holding reasonably with the black pieces. Mm -hmm.